My name is Steve McGee. Uh, I'm a professor of medicine uh, at the University of Washington, and uh, I work uh, at the uh, Seattle VA Medical Center, where I take care of patients, uh, practice infectious disease general medicine, and uh, am heavily uh, invested in the teaching of residents and students there. When I was uh, learning physical diagnosis, this would be the 1970s and 80s, there were many excellent physical diagnosis books out there. But uh, what I noticed is they often made claims about a particular finding, and I was very interested in what the evidence was supporting that particular claim. And that information was difficult to find. And so uh, early on as a faculty member, um, uh, I became very interested in making that my area of research to really try and understand what was the basis for the, these accuracy claims for some of the physical findings. Um, so historically, finding, uh, uh, finding out what the basis was, but then looking at how the finding uh, compares to an accepted technologic standard. So I spent a lot of time doing that. I actually took a sabbatical. Uh, where I left my job for about a year and worked on the first edition of the book uh, to really try and sort through what was accurate and what was not. Physical exam is an essential part of uh, taking care of patients and, um, and, and you know for many clinical problems the decision whether or not a patient has that problem is based entirely on physical exam. And an uh, example would be Parkinson's disease. The only way you can tell someone has Parkinson's disease is by do they have the characteristic findings of Parkinson's disease. Um, but even for those findings that we now agree, we're more interested in what the technologic standard reveals. For example, you have a patient with a systolic murmur we're mostly interested in what the echocardiogram ultimately is going to show. It's still important to do the physical exam and to recognize what is accurate and what is not. Be for many reasons. One, you may decide not to pursue the technologic test because the disorder seems so unlikely or so likely after your bedside exam. Um, and, uh, and also it helps you decide how quickly you need the particular diagnostic test. If you hear a systolic murmur and you're quite confident it is, does not indicate valvular heart disease, you may postpone it, uh, you know, doing the diagnostic test uh, until later. So it helps you, uh, it just it gives you confidence in um, diagnosing your patient's condition and it really helps you, even if you ultimately are going to get the technologic test, it helps you decide how quickly it's necessary or whether you can safely postpone the test. For my particular title, the evidence-based physical diagnosis, I mean, just having uh, quickly available to you at the patient's bedside uh, which findings are most accurate, um, you know, through an electronic resource, um, would be ideal. You know, so you're at the bedside. You have a patient who has abdominal distension. You're wondering, do they have ascites or not? We all have learned oodles of physical findings for ascites, but to be able to quickly identify maybe these four are the ones you really need to look for and you can be confident in applying them to your patients. So I think having those numbers available to you, maybe not the entire subtlety of the evidence behind the exam, but having the numbers available to you is, is uh, very, very important and I think having um, you know, the title available electronically is, is a, really facilitates that. Being at the bedside of patients is critical. Uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. And uh, in modern medicine, that's getting harder and harder to do for a variety of reasons. Um, but um, I think if we want to be, um, you know, good clinicians who help our patients recover, we really do need to spend time at the bedside with our patients. And one important component of that is uh, the physical exam. So my advice to learners is to when you're trying to settle a question, um, what's going on with your patient, that the place you begin is the bedside. And of course there's technology, there's imaging, there's laboratory testing, there's, also, there's consultants, but really where you go to frame the question uh, and where you go to begin the diagnostic process 
uh, is at the patient's bedside. So I would just always encourage learners to make that a fundamental uh, component of taking care of patients.